So when you say they question the effects rather than their thoughts, what do you mean? Okay. Okay, let, so we'll, let's talk about a particular thing. So, like, like in relationship to the, we were talking about it in relationship to something in the course, though, were we? Yes, that we were talking well, about like they 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 read it through their own meaning, the the words exactly, meaning, right, the meaning what the they words, think right, the words okay. mean rather and, than what and, they're given it's, to it's, mean. Here, here's what I'm saying. Okay, everybody uses the same. Let's pick. Let's say this. You come into the you come into a limited world. Is the whole theory. You come into the limited world. And everybody's limitations are the same. So we all use the same language. And the limitations on the language, is you, we all can mistake. We could all mistake it. And it become non-communicative. But you don't know it's non-communicative. Because the other person hears something, but it's not what you're saying. And then he says what you what he thought he said. And, he, and you don't understand it at all. So, so there's something wrong. And what we attribute to this people, oh, he's just dumb, he's stupid, whatever. But the truth of the matter is, what I find is, especially with the courses, and there's a, there's a lot of examples, it's like the word forgiveness, let's talk about that, because that's the big one, okay? If everybody talks about what forgiveness is, including the traveling Wilburys, the best you can do is forgive. Well, the truth is the best you can do is forgive here, but it's not the best you can do is at the end of the thing, the best you can do is forgive, because... Forgiveness really opens your mind to the totality of reality. And yeah, well, makes you want so it's like the Grateful Dead line: "Forgiveness is the key to everything." Absolutely, it's, it's, yeah, right, yeah, right. It is. He says it the right way in that song. That's right. Yeah. And everybody, okay, and everybody knows it's forgiveness, right? Okay, so everybody's got an idea. Yeah, it's forgiveness. It's forgiveness. Okay, so then they go to figure out what is forgiveness. Now, depending on in, in the Catholic tradition, they have an idea of what forgiveness is. Protestants have an idea of what forgiveness is, I'm sure, and I know, I mean, I know it's it's different from the Catholics. Obviously, if we use the word here, Chinese use the word, they use it when who knows what it means to them because I don't talk to them. So the more I talk to Course in Miracles students, different areas have different meaning of ideas of what forgiveness is. Different, um, in the Bible, the Old Testament there's an idea of what forgiveness is. Jesus says what what forgiveness is, but you still only hear it to the best of your ability under the, with the, with, let's call it, with the baggage you bring with it. You bring meaning <clears throat> forward with you to words. Meaning is an association in your mind. Like you, so the meaning you associate based on where you, you know, whatever it is, being a Catholic, being a Protestant, how your family used it, <clears throat> whether it was welcome in your family, all of that contributes to your understanding of what forgiveness is. But ultimately, there was, it's a single word, and it has a meaning. If you looked it up in the dictionary, and everybody used the same word, the meaning, if everybody agreed <coughs> to use the same meaning, and they followed it through logically, they would find out what forgiveness is based on what Jesus is talking about. Okay, If forgiveness is the way out of hell, if forgiveness is the way out of hell, then there must be a way out. Okay, Now, this is what I'm saying. If you... To, if, if, if you say that to a Catholic, if you use, I'm going to have to say this the right way, the way he would say. If you refer, if you're doing a lesson in the Course of Miracles, and somebody else is doing a lesson, or you're talking about the lesson in the Course of Miracles, and this person comes from a Catholic background, and you, like a traditionalist, you're trying to really get it right, you say, no, I'm using Jesus, what Jesus says about forgiveness, okay. What Jesus says is, the first part of the course is the theoretical framework. Okay? So he builds, let's say, he builds his theory as to why we, as to who we are, why we are that, how we can know, how we can prove to ourselves we're that, based on the use of particular things, what we use them on, and whether we use them truly or falsely. That's all he's concerned. This is very binary. It's yes or no. There's really no discussion. It's yes or no. Okay. So, so the, the truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I moved my hands. Okay. So the truth is this. It doesn't matter what you think about forgiveness, even if you think rightly. You can drop all your thoughts, all your past association with forgiveness, 
or your future ideas of what happens from forgiveness, the only way you can actually hear what I'm going to say is to hear these words right now with me now. Because right now they have meaning and they're shared meaning. And I'm going to tell you what I mean so that we, in the telling, you're, we're going to share the meaning. And from now on, when you hear that word in the book, this is what you're going to think. That's what he's really asking you to do. When he says, none of your thoughts mean anything. Okay. None of your thoughts, even the right ones about forgiveness, don't mean anything right now. Because we're in a, we're in a particular training. We're going to train your mind in a new way. Different way. Nobody's ever trained your mind this way. We're going to train your mind in a new way, a systematic way, to undo what you thought and, and introduce a new meaning. And you're going to think the same way. But when you start with this new meaning and you reason, even with the reasoning you have now, when you reason from the new meaning, you're going to come up with a different conclusion, a conclusion that you've not been able to come up with, but one when you come up with it, you'll understand it's true, based on the acceptance of the, of the theoretical framework. Now, the only way that's possible is, even if you think you know what the words are, you have to, like, if you get the word forgiveness, <clears throat> you have to say, okay, wait a second, I'm not entirely sure I know what forgiveness means, or I think I know what forgiveness means, but let me find out what he thinks it means, because reading his book, it's more important that I find out what he thinks it means than what I think, because there's nothing new there. Was it, I'm not going to learn anything new if I continue to use the meanings I used. How could I? What he's also saying, in the, in, <clears throat> what he's also saying as he goes forward, when he teaches you how you think in the first bunch of lessons, he teaches you how to think, how to think in a new way so that you can think along the lines that the theoretical framework is presenting to you. You're going to learn how to undo what you think so that you can use your mind to think in a new way that is along the lines of the theoretical framework and what's it, and what's it presenting to you. Okay. So that's why he, we moved what, she, what um, Ken called the um, clarification of terms to the front and call it use of terms. And we took out the dualistic approach that Ken had, which was he had juxtaposition words, like love, fear. Like if this was this, then this, if he means this with this, he doesn't say, if he means this with this, then this is what the other thing means. So it was based on Ken's idea that one related to the other, the way Ken thought they were, but that is what dualistic thinking is. That's not the, that Ken never thought that the problem was the way he thought. The problem was the way he was, the, he, his conclusion was wrong. And he couldn't, because he, he had never had the experience. But what, basically what, what Jesus is saying is, I'm going to give you new variables. We're going, to change, we're going to change the variables you use in this system of thought. And we're going to both use the same meaning for the same word by going to the beginning of the book and reading the use of terms and here is how I use these terms within this book. Well, it's interesting you talk about like the forgiveness and the meaning of forgiveness and the way he uses it because we've just been doing um, reading through the Song of Prayer, uh -huh. which of course got the letters of prayer and what he means by yes. prayer, what what he means by prayer, and then he goes on to explain forgiveness and how it's yes. commonly thought or experienced within the human condition as what right, he exactly. termed forgiveness to destroy and then goes on and <laughs> and clearly states forgiveness for salvation and what he means right what he means that's a, that's absolutely true now that's to me it's more important that they read that first because if they can't accept that there's no point in reading the book so why wasn't this a taught at the academy from day one, like when we came as new people? Because I wasn't there. Because I wasn't there. Because it wasn't their job. It's not. It was. It was my. It, that was. It was a different, different phase. I first of all, the old man gave me all the hints by doing it the wrong way. This is. I'm gonna, this is the truth about me and the old man. I learned what to do, not from him, but I could see the wrong way didn't work, so I had to ask for the right way. 
could see that people weren't learning the course, that they were getting this energy. And it wasn't that the energy was wrong, it's that they weren't getting the course of what the course said. And Dion was trying to be something that he wasn't and didn't have to be. Now, I learned that from him. And there's a point in time when my learning that was no longer any good. Because it was done. Like, I had to prove that to myself, that that was true. What I learned was true. And that's what I went through. Now, <clears throat> in that, I started to get new understandings, even of my relationship to the Course and my relationship to Jesus. I would, I, I, I had glimpses of that, that being true. And the other part was this. <clears throat> I just told you about Melissa. I never knew she hated me until today. I, 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 I never really accepted that they, it didn't dawn on me that they didn't know this stuff. If they had the experience I had, or they said they read the book the way they did, it didn't dawn on me that they didn't understand it. It wasn't until I heard, it wasn't until I heard them teach or talk, because I, I never did, like I was, you know, they were listening to me, I didn't have to listen to them. And the old man, the old man didn't matter what he said, because I was there in service, it didn't matter. They listened, the old man could have said, it didn't matter. The old man had, was whatever he was to me, and I know he was awake, and I know somehow he was the only guy I would have served on this planet. And I'm grateful for him, but it, it, that doesn't mean he wasn't an asshole sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't mean he didn't treat, but everything has a real purpose. Like the way he treated me had a purpose too. That's why I love, because when I finally saw what it is, it couldn't be anything but helpful. That doesn't mean it feels good. It just means when you really look at it with the right mind, everything he has the purpose, and every there's only one true purpose, so everything here either serves one purpose or it serves chaos and nothing. And you know what it's what, what you're serving by feeling chaotic and nothingness. When you have stuff comes on, that's really what the fuck is going on. It doesn't matter who I'm serving, it's not right. I gotta figure out how to go back to you know, being aligning and converging what I'm supposed to do here. And nobody can tell me that, but Nobody can really tell you that except the total design. Seeing it as a movie and knowing what to do. Otherwise, nobody would ever know what to do. Okay. But the only way anybody would know what to do is if there was, there was a right way for it to have happened in order to do it. Okay. The only way anybody knows that is by experimenting, by trying it. And the verification of the instructions... So somebody comes through like, hey, Jesus, I, I learned that Jesus says, I learned that, that there's no death and nobody really dies. <laughs> OK, so now he's talking to us. After, now, you would think that the proof is Helen heard Jesus' voice. And, and now, but Ken said, no, it's not really Jesus Christ, blah, 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 all that stuff. Now, if it's I read the words immediately and I had had an experience, the only person I knew that had that experience was Jesus because he's the. He, he is the one who did that. Nobody else did that. In your mind, since we, it's a shared mind, whether you're conscious of it or not, it's there. Because you know yourself from prior to being here. We all were one prior to this, and we're still one here, but we don't recognize ourselves from there. We're trying to figure out how we know each other from here. And the more we try to figure out how we know each other from here, the less we know each other. But because the closer we get, the more we're denying who we really are. So we close ourselves down. The closer we think we know everything here, we close ourselves so down, we're looking for stuff that doesn't exist to prove something that we don't want to be in the end anyway. Because that's not what we're really looking for. We do know everybody, but how we know everybody is in reality, is in love. People think that's a location. It's a state of mind in which you recognize everybody as real and love. What that means to you, it means to you. But certainly isn't the way it is in this world because you're not recognizing it now. Everybody who recognizes that understands one thing. This isn't a real place and I'm not this body and you're not this body. And the truth of the matter is we never will be. But at least if we're here, we can talk to each other about what we know is true. Because there is only one thing that's true. Now. What Jesus is saying is, truth is true and nothing else is true. What makes it true is the utilization of it over and time and time again to get a consistent result, not a consistent result behaviorally, a consistent result experientially within yourself that shows you more and more that 
who you are is who you are and who you were meant to be, and that's not changeable. And even this, no matter what it is, can't stop you from being it. And there's a way you know all that. And you start to read it. Now, my experience was so total. I, I, I can't hold that. I can't. All I know is Jesus and I have this shared experience of everything. And we've shared everything in that book. And now we've gone on to a new thing. So what I'm saying to you is everything Jesus learned is true. We can't die. There's no such thing as death. If you try to die, it doesn't solve the problem. And eventually you're going to come to the same conclusion. What do I do then? At that point in time, you're going to have to learn from somebody who went through it and came out successfully. Now, the only person I know who I could vouch for myself, who has gone through it successfully, that I could talk to about it in the way I need to, is Jesus. I talked to a lot of other guys who were up there too, but they don't help me the way he does because they didn't go through the experience. I know he did because what I knew about Jesus before I even talked, before he started talking to me was, I knew one thing. If I really met Jesus, he would be able to tell me what the resurrection was truly, and I would know whether it was true or not. The first thing when Jesus said to me, when he started talking to me the second time, I said yes, was I didn't have to, he showed me what the resurrection was. And I, I resurrected. We arose from the dead together as one. I knew it was true. Just and now I, everything that he says in that book is absolutely true, word for word. And what he's saying is, if you did everything the way it, this book, you would find out exactly what I know and exactly what I know. Now, there's two things you could do. You could decide that you need to prove yourself, or you could use this and come along and find out, you know, even more. But you have to believe this is true. Otherwise, and use the terms that I use to understand the way I understand. Now, this is all in the book. To understand the way I understand, you must use the terms the way you must use, know what I know. The only way we can talk about it here is if I give you a word, and the word means the same thing. It's like forgiveness. This is what I found. The reason people don't understand the book is because they don't change the, the meaning of the words that they're reading in the book. They're waiting for words to have new meaning from someplace else so there's a different word altogether or something. They just don't ever question the meaning that they're using of forgiveness. So I started to read people who thought they knew the course and I saw that the forgiveness that they were using in their mind could not bring them to the conclusion logically or reasonably that Jesus was teaching. So that somewhere there was a, a fault or an error, not in the book, but in their teaching of it, because they were trying to teach that they knew what it said and they couldn't know, they couldn't possibly know what it said without agreeing on the words. And consistently what I heard, what I saw is they're not using forgiveness the way Jesus understands forgiveness. If you use, it's like A plus B equals C. If you use A the way it is, and you use B the way it is, you're going to get it C. That's what Jesus is saying. If you use these few words the way I, I do, your logical thinking is going to tell you logically why it, it's not only possible, but because we're going from a binary, we're going from a dualistic system of thinking where everything has an opposite, so that everything along the lines has everything has an like everything you can think of has to have an opposite and has you have to show and what has to happen to make this a reality to make this this real to you is it when you're thinking what you're thinking there has to be an opposite thinking and it has to happen before you're convinced you don't have to remember it it just has had to happen to you and that's what's happened everything you've thought everything you could think of happened and this is the end of the line except you'll keep on doing it over and over again because you don't use the right proof, but you use it in the same mind. That the truth is our minds are perfect and whole. And if we plug in any information we plug in, they're gonna, it's going to think truly about the information it's given. If you're given false information, it's going to think truly about false information. So the conclusions it'll come up with are true within the falsity of the use of the words.
So give me an example of that. Okay, so I, I mean, forgiveness. I know that the way the Catholics think of forgiveness, of uh, forgiveness is the idea that you're guilty. And there's a way that God will help you. God will show you the way to not be guilty in his eyes anymore. Okay? So to forgive this to most people is, I'm guilty. God created me. Somehow I'm guilty. Now, I can, I, the only way I can get unguilty is by doing something pleasing to God. The other end is, because God doesn't like me because I feel the way this way, so I must be not pleasing to God. What do I have to do to please God? Okay? Here's why those systems work. Because it's not true that God is not pleased by you, and it's not true that God doesn't like you. It is true that you are love, because God created you that way, as the son, to extend the love that he is. Well, how come, it it's must be though, true, it right. must go it's back to... You. you can't know your love here unless something validates what love is, because we don't know what love is here. Because this is, this is the opposition and denial of love. It's not made by God. It's not created by God. It was an attempt by, you know, it was an attempt by, let's call them 12 bandits to run away from heaven and to prove they run away from heaven by, you know, speaking, you know, how far do we get? You can't get it. So you can't get, you can't get, the only thing, this is what they said, this is what I'm trying to say, okay? The only thing they could possibly know is what they know and knew as who they are in heaven, okay? Because that's what you are. You are who you are, where you were created, as you were created it. doesn't matter what you call that or what it is. You can't be more or less than that. Because there isn't more or less than that for you to know about. There is only the, the maximum you can know is all the, all the knowledge in the universe, the universe that you know exists and will claim exists, and whatever you think is beyond the universe that you think you know, okay? The only problem is the mind that's saying that to me claims it could know a limited amount of stuff as all there is. That's not true. If your mind is unlimited, there is no limit on what you can know. An unlimited mind here is telling you my, the limitations of what they could know and not know. That's not a possibility. In an unlim in a tr mind that's true, there's nothing not known. So it doesn't think about things in terms of not known. It thinks about things as whole and perfect. So there's not, there's not love and something else. There's love, there's all there is, is love. The way we think down here, and this is what the course of it, the way we think down here, because we forgot that there's only love, we think that love has an opposite, and we call that opposite hate. Okay? In reality, love has no opposite. Here, because we, we our, our whole mind, in the fall, split because there must have been something we hit. What now we're looking? What we hit? Okay, we fell asleep and didn't wake up. There's no real explanation for that because that can never really happen. Within the dream, we can come up with an explanation that leads you so close and so totally to the realization that what we're saying is true that the realization will be available to you when you're available to it. And that means whatever it means to you and the realization. And I know the realization of Jesus is true, and I know that I'm true because everything in this world, every conversation I have, every conversation, any place I go, everything that happens here, and more so, even now, the people are calling me. Everything that happens here only proves one thing to me. I'm here now, no longer in service to the old man because he's gone. My service now is to Jesus and Jesus' service to me because we have nothing else to do but serve you guys and try to figure out how to get you guys the fuck out of here because this isn't real. It's not your home. Every problem you're having, none of these problems are true. When you remember like we remember, you're not even going to remember that you forgot 
and I don't give a shit what you think of me then we wear there's only love I'm not, I'm not trying to be special Jesus is not trying to be special we're just trying to tell you we know the truth I, he'll verify me I'm testifying he's telling me this if I testify for him he will witness for me somehow now I don't really care about the witnessing I don't care it's me I just care that there's nothing really held for me to do here because I know what Jesus knows, and Jesus knows I know that, and we share it every day. And there's no longer any question in my mind, because everything in my life now is about that. And, there, and I've come to the conclusion that there's nothing else to do. And for obvious reasons, the, the, the reasons reveal themselves to me every day. And it always comes, it, they, they never don't. I have something, I, I have something, it's like an agreement. And the agreement is, I need to be sure that I'm on the right track. Not like I define Jesus or God. That's that, That's done. I'm not looking for anybody. I'm looking to fulfill my function in God's plan. And God's plan is the plan that helps everybody remember that this never happened and they need it. They don't even, they never needed the plan. Because then they're going to know who they are and they're going to know who God is. And that's all there is. And there is nothing else than that. And since it is only love, Nothing ever could tear it apart, nor would there anything else you would want to be. Now, in the dream of opposition and denial of that, the only thoughts you could ever have are thoughts that deny that's true, whether you agree with it or not. Because your, your denial of it is what this is made of. Every thought... This is, just like you said, oh God, there's no God. Bang, now you got a world. You got to fill the world up. What it's filled up with is not your denial, but the thoughts you use to verify the denial as real. Those are, that's what the image is everybody here makes. No one is here who believed God, who thought, God, nobody, you can't, you can't come in here knowing the truth because this is a place where the truth is is denied. It's built as the denial. It's built on the denial by those who are denying. Their purpose is to deny themselves the truth, deny each other the truth, and deny that they're denying it because that's the best way they can hide it. Now, the only way anybody can find out that that is true is by leaving here. And from their perspective of what's real, understand what's going on here because you can't understand from it at all. Jesus says it's next to impossible, and I understand it too. It's next to impossible for anybody here to believe that none of this is real. Neither, and, and that the way I'm talking about myself, I would have to say is, this thing here is not real. This seed's not real. Nothing about this is real, and it never happened. In reality, that's why we talk about it in particular ways. In reality, this never happened, never will happen, and could never happen. Only in a dream that denies reality is true by thinking everything in opposition to, deny, to reality is real and true. It has to make up ways that that isn't true. And the only way you can make up a way that that isn't true is by being, it has to be totally complete. Total completion here means it has a complete positive and a complete negative. In reality, there's no such thing as negative. So the positive you think is reality, and you try to say, oh, I know what reality is, if it's all positive, you're still thinking about the positive here. You can't think about the positive there here unless you've had an experience of it there that negates this totally as much as this has negated that totally to you. Then you can come back here and you got something to compare it to. Until that happens, you don't have anything to compare it to. Even the words of Jesus, who had that experience, and you use, you get wrong, because you don't understand what he said. You can, This is what the book says. Your answer says the same thing. He said, listen, I know you think you understand me, but you can't understand me. So Jesus goes one step further. I'm going to even give you lessons to help you understand me. And I know, and, and you got to mistake the lessons, but I'm going to say the best. I'm going to do my best to keep your mind in a lesson and show you why the lesson is true and, every, and the reason why you avoid the lesson you no longer want to do because that's what's hurting you. And you have to find out and admit you're hurt before you can undo the hurt. And you want to know what else? You have to find out you, and undo 
the hurt, and you have to find out the way you want to do this, finding out that you were wrong about the hurt in every way. Otherwise, the hurt has reality here. It can't have reality here at all. Or it has to be reasonable that it doesn't have, it's here, it's not real. It's what they're talking about here is not real in reality. It's not what's in reality. There's nothing here that is true and whole and perfect. So there's nothing here like we love, even love here. Is it what love is there? You can't have that kind of love here. You can only have the, re, the memory of that. Because this whole zone, there's nothing, there's nothing. It, to try to love like that, they, they lock you up. And if you think you love like that, you try to act like you love like that, they lock you up. Because you can't be love here. You can only be loving. Or you can do what love wants you to do. You can behave the right way. But you can't be love here. Because if you're love, what's everybody else hate? You can't be love. You're a person. You got a body. You look like everybody else. So you can't be love. You can come to know what love means. Or you can decide, fuck love. I want to keep it hate. But you can't be love here. Not because you're not love. It's never because you're not love right here, here right now. It's because you can't be that here because this is denial that that exists. And in order for it to exist at all, it has to, you have had to chose the denial and know what it is you're denying and been so well at it, you don't want to remember. Because that's all the other thing is possible. The other thing is possible is you don't want to remember in your own denial. But it's so deep that if you can't know that. You hear that as only condemnation. I hear that as that's your way out. That's the help. That's the only reason I'm here. If that's the good news. Jesus knows that's the good news. I found that's the good news. My heart right now is leaping because I'm finally telling the truth about what this is all about. You, you couldn't possibly know and feel the energy. And that It's like everything in the universe. Because I, find, I finally told the truth about what this is about. You can't, you can't know here. You can think you know until you have the experience of this not being real in its entirety. You being here, not being real in society, and knowing who you are, whole, perfect in heaven, in its entirety, knowing that's real too, and that that's got to include the fact that there's a father and there's a son, and you're a son, and you're a soul, you're a soul, you're a whole part of what God is. It's like a cloud. You're a piece of the cloud, but you're not the cloud. You have every aspect of the thing in the cloud, and you can do everything in that cloud, but you're not the cloud in its entirety. You don't exist without the cloud. The cloud is God. God can exist without parts of the cloud, pieces, because it, it's whole and perfect the whole time. That's always what, and the more it expands, the more God is, and the more you're helping, but without God, there's no, without you, there's God without you. There's no you without God. That's not possible. Otherwise, this, this would be real. It's not in any regard. There's only two people I know who know that entirely. There's only two people I know. Let me put it this way: There's only two people I know and can that I know as people that I've read about as people and accepted because I know them as a people somehow, and I know they're true. And that's Jesus and me. Now I know other beings, like beings I know. Like, you know, Ramana and Maharshi let me sit. You know, these other guys all ask me questions or give me answers to help. This is what it's all about. I, I get answers from any place in the universe, any place outside the universe to make corrections of misperceptions that we have. Because when one of your misperceptions get corrected, because you see truly as we see it, you're going to, everything's going to straighten out and you're not going to be able to stay here because there's no, because what you're seeing, including you seeing yourself, doesn't exist. And you're going to find out for yourself that there's no way you would sit here and do it. It wouldn't make any sense. Because being here as a person in space and time, when you know what you're doing, doesn't make any sense at all. And all we try to do is figure out what it within it is going to help us make sense of the fact that I can't figure out what's going on here. There's nothing here. You can't look here. 
the best you go is there's something beyond here, but I, and until you know what that is, you can't know. Now, I think that I know there's other people like me who can make the same claim because I've met them now. That you know, this I mean, I know Josh, I mean, there's people who know this. It's I, whether it's their job to say this or not, I don't know, I don't care. Whether it's my job to proclaim that the world, I don't know. That's not my job is to say every word of that book is true. I've used the book as the book was designed, and I got the results that verify the fact that it's true. And the way I know that's true is. I had the total experience before I even knew there was a book, and when I picked up the book, I knew that worked, because that's the way it happened to me, without me knowing there was a book. When I read the book, I knew, oh, this will definitely work, because this, this is how it happened to me. Jesus up there wrote it and said, this is how it will happen when you, if you do it. I read the book and said, this is exactly how it happens. Now, whether it happens to another person or not, doesn't matter. Because now more than that is happening. The th our thoughts are now, the thoughts that are aware of the totality of what's happening, as this a dream, as that what it is, and as everything here, coming to the logical conclusion that there is no existence here, never was, so there's no point to this, and in that, what you're doing is, you're disincorporating yourself and the world by dropping the meaning you gave to the words that you were using that allowed you to think the thoughts that led you to the conclusions that every led you to the conclusions that deny you the ability to remember that everything here that's going on is your thinking right now, including me. But I remember what the fuck I'm doing both here and there because I've been both there and here, and I talk to them more than I talk to he. I don't really believe the people here. I talk to them to communicate. So I talk about mundane things because I know they know about them. When we start, to, I know the other thing is when you start to get familiar with people, you start to talk about other things. It's not so much what you say; it's like how you feel with them. And I don't have to convince people of anything. I just have to be me. I'm talking about this because this is part of a function that I have, and I know, I, and I know who you are. I don't care what you know about yourself. I know who you are. I love you. I couldn't do this with anybody else. I couldn't talk like this about this with anybody else. I have to use words that take the meaning and can be misconveyed because I'm not, I, I don't want to use them. I want to use these words. Okay. And I don't care if people don't get the wrong impression. I'm the only one that choose. It doesn't, what I'm saying is, even if that being true, it really doesn't matter anymore. Because that being true changed everything so that Jesus doesn't know what the hell's going to happen. He only knows that we all end up together at home like we never left. He doesn't really give a shit how you get there. You want to know why? He's already there. He knows and I know what he knows. The outcome is inevitable. It could take a thousand years, ten thousand years, or it could take fifteen minutes. It's always going to seem to have taken as long as it's taken. When we're done, it didn't take any time because it didn't happen at all. I know that. The stupidest thing I could ever do is be here talking to this, talking to anybody about it. Because all it proves is I'm an idiot. And I did this to myself. And I did it to myself a second time and a third time. And the last time I did it, I did it myself knowing full well what the consequences are in doing it. But I did it anyway. And it's the feeling so alone with it. You can't get out of the feelings until you're out of it. It's like everything's contained within it. It's totally self-contained. And it includes your self-containment without your ability to know it's your self-contained, which is the, what denial is. You're totally denied access to it by yourself, by your own choice, and that—that's including what—that's what it—that's what it's all made of, and that's why it served the purpose. For, but it could, the only way you could know it served the purpose is by somebody who outside say, "Okay, it really worked. You really did deny God." But when you start to think about God, you say, that's not possible. I don't get it with that. So you start to make this real because you don't want to admit that none of this is real. Because from inside of it, you can't know it. And if you were outside of it, you would never come back. So it would never have happened to you. But there'd be some people that are still thinking the same thoughts. I don't want that to happen. You want to go, you're free to go. Everybody else is free to go. I don't care. I, I hope they learn and can. I just know that I can't. I, I have to somehow. 
tell the truth about this. So it's understood in the language that we speak so they can match up the feelings that they would have and, and they can see that, oh, this guy knows a little bit what he's talking about because he has the feelings. And when I talk to him, something else is going on with me. Because I'm hearing something that I don't, have, don't usually hear places. And maybe the word's the same, but there's something else going on. And now I don't know whether to believe it or not because they took that. And it's true that you don't really know. And it doesn't really matter whether you believe me now or later, because I know the truth. You're going to come to the same truth, and you're going to have to have it verified by somebody as well. So you're going to come to me, or it doesn't matter now. I hope this is the thing that's happening. Whatever I'm, whatever I'm saying scares people so much that they really got to run to Jesus. When they believe me, go to that Jesus and find out, because that's the only thing they can do. There's no other way. What I'm telling you is, what I'm telling you is, you want to know what I know, and Jesus knows. You got to talk to one or the other. There's no other way to know. You can read the book and find out, but you're still going to have to have it verified by your own experiences of it. Otherwise, it's all going to be theory and concepts. It's not going to be true to you. Now, there's two ways you can proceed. You can do that thing over and over again to try to get the results, but that's not what it says to do. Where it says, train your mind in a systematic way, do this for a year, and then begin to see what's going on and see which way you really want to go. Even if you decided that you wanted to go the way Jesus is talking about, there's still a world here, we still got to live in it, as we are, but we're going to learn to live in it as a new way from now on. And it's going to be, and I know it has to be new, is because when Jesus wrote that book, he said so, he made certain statements in it, and they were all based on no one here knowing what he knows. That's no longer true. That changes the nature of everything because what makes this is projection of conscious projection. Our awareness asleep projects the images I was talking about and we believe them to be true. I remember believing them to be true and I don't want them to be true anymore. And the fastest way for this to happen is a squeeze play. He's telling you the only truth is true and, and nothing else is true. I'm telling you the truth is true and nothing else is true. But we're also saying nothing here is true. And it never will be. Stop looking for the truth where it ain't. Because the more, more emotion you get is the exact same results you've been getting. If you like the results, continue. But you're not going to get more. You're only going to start to get less. Because there's going to be less and less of it to get. Because the more and more we hang out here, the more and more it's being made available, the more. You're denying that you want any part of the more. That more is getting, the less, that makes the less smaller and smaller. Now where I come from, there's no such thing as less. And the more only gets to be more and more. You can't know that here. That's all gobbling. You can't know, you can't, like the idea that he's, infinity creates love eternally and the love that it creates is infinite. Those are words that you try to say what they mean. But the feeling of it, it's like if, if you thought you knew what it meant, you would think that being loved is boring and you would never want to go home. Because it would be just like here. So if I could do that every day, who wants to? I want to do something new. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new you can do here. It's repetition of ways in different forms. And you think you and the, the best you can get is convincing yourself that it's true when it's not. And there's always this nagging thing saying it's never going to be true. It's never going to be true. It's not true. It's not true now. There was the best. There will be in the future. Only because this doesn't exist at all. And the answer lies not in it. But the answer in it seems to be a lie. Because how else? How could this not be real? This is how powerful you are. As a son of God, as God created you, this is how powerful you are. Think of it in terms of you took the power to create and this is what you made. A dream in which you can't remember your dreaming so you can't get the satisfaction of dreaming it. Okay? So I can give you the satisfaction of dreaming it and say there's something new. Boy, you can learn on your own and when you learn on your own it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt more than it does now because you're going to hear more time. And when you get older you can take it less and less. All that is true. So you can read the question, that's true, and you know that's true about it's true about you here. Otherwise there'd be no point to read the book at all. 
and you think that you are here. You can't not. I, I got to think I'm here to, to do this, but I know that here is real, and where I'm really from, this doesn't exist. Now, that sounds like something they would lock me up for, and they have several times. Because it's gobbledygook when you start to apply it to particular ideas. As a theory of what it is, then you can look at it, okay, how would that, how would this be there? And it can't. So this must not be there, and there must not be this. That's true. Until you have the experience, that's, that's only a theory. In the experience, it's absolute. Because reality is absolute, and this is not at all. That's all I can say. So you have to learn to use the experiences you're having here in a different way or with a different understanding of what they are. And the only way that can happen is we change our ideas about what is really happening. You have to be reoriented. Okay, so that takes two things. It takes a moment of recognizing, first of all, you were disoriented. If I have to reorient, I mean, everything I, everything I did in the past, I have to do, I either was wasted or I have to, I get disassociated from everything. Is that really what I'm going to do here? I have to be, you have to become disoriented to be reoriented. That's why he even talks about that. There's a the period of disorientation is as long as a short you will have a date. I'm just, and he, he really does everything I do. God bless you. Okay. Can I talk? Yeah. Okay. This is what I have to say. Because we shared, because somehow we share the same mind and had the exact same experiences. When I get down to saying what I need to say so that you understand me, it literally comes out as the words in the book. But they come out understand most people then begin to understand when they write on it. They begin to understand what's going on because I'm talking about it in the right way. And they either want to hear it in the right way or they want to deny what I'm saying so as they continue to hear it the way they do and justify the meaning they've given it. There's no choice. Nobody has a choice. They will use every example, everything in the world to try to prove to me I'm wrong or prove to me I'm right. And they've had the experience. And if they need to prove it at all, one way or the other, they haven't had the experience. There's nothing to prove. You are it or you're not. That's just the way it is. And that you can There's no nobody here can prove anything to me. Nobody out there can prove anything to me. It's just it's another proof. It's wonder. Why the hell I'm here? You want to know why, man? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus saved my life and showed me what salvation is at a time when I. Could, and this is my favor. I'm. Saying, I, I saw a way in which I personally saw a way that if Jesus knew it was true and I knew it was true, two or three of us know it was true and did the whole thing because everybody would have to know within our period of time because they, as above, so below, as within, so without. Because it's true above, it is true here. I'm verifying that. So if it's true here and people are searching for truth, they're going to find what we're talking about. There's no choice because it's true. As above, so below, as within, so without. It's interesting. I don't understand how it is, like, with different minds, like, we'll hear what frees you. Like, the other day I was talking to this guy, Peter Cutler, and I was uh -huh. telling me how, like, I took on the irresponsibility, like you were saying before, like, you know, you hear it as condemnation, but it actually frees right. you. Like, I took on the responsibility for the entirety right. of the universe and the separation from God. Right. But I heard it in a condemning way, whereas as when I told him that, he immediately saw the freedom in it and said, no, that's Excellent. really freeing. He he heard it the right way immediately sort of thing, right. whereas I didn't hear it that way at all. All it did was cause extreme guilt and condemnation. Well, I can do it thing. this way. I can say, listen, here's the joke. You know what Jesus said, the idea was that only, I'm the only one who had the idea of separation. I only, I'm the only one who ever need to repair Jesus knows that's true, and I know that's true. The only reason I'm here is to tell you so you can laugh at it. You forgot to laugh at the joke. Because I'm telling you, 
I'm the, I'm, I, I made the error, and I made the, and it was repaired through me, and it was laughable because it's not true. You guys were so serious and wanted to find out who did it, you forgot to laugh at the joke. I did it. Now laugh at the joke. No, it's that easy. You want to know who did it? I did it. It was a joke. You can't be separate from God. Ha ha. We all proved it. Now we don't have to do it anymore. It was my idea. It was a stupid idea. Let it be my idea, a stupid idea. Laugh at the joke and it's over. My brother, my real brother, when he heard me say that, he said, but that means you really do it. And she said, he laughed. And I laughed. That's, that's, that's right. Said, that's right. And we he got it right away. Because he's not thinking spiritually. He's thinking, oh, that's right. That's right. My brother in heaven told me that. My brother here made it true. It's it's completely true. Now, it's stupid. And when I think about it, I'm going to laugh like an idiot. But the love behind it is total. Now, I can't be total here. I can only I can I can only rein it in enough so I can talk about it in a way that sounds reasonable to you. Now, the more reasonable I can get to more different people in ways by using their words to show them, like just take the word. What if this word meant that instead of that? It changes all everything I've ever thought. That's right. Now, the way the way Jesus learned it. And the why it's true here is because here, when you think of a way, it has a poss- it has even if it has a ninety nine point nine percent possibility of working. The reason why you have to try it all is because something's not working. So you'd have to use it at all, so it can't be one hundred percent true here. There's always the, it could always be wrong because how did you get here in the first place? Nothing could be one hundred percent true because you're here. And you ain't going nowhere unless it's 100%, 100% true, you're going there. In theory and in fact, that's true. You just let you just nod your don't remember the old man, don't nod your head at me. You just nod your head at what I said because it's true. And you hear it as true. Finally, and you don't hear it as true because you think it is true. You hear it because you're thinking, finally, a thought matched something in your mind and something in your heart at the same time. And he went, oh, fuck, that's right. That was right. That's what makes it right. That's how you know it's right. That's not what's true here. When you begin, when you, when you, when all of a sudden the thought matches you so much you don't have to think anymore for a second and you sink down to your heart and it, it, it's, you're, you, you're, you don't, you're not thinking, you're experiencing the thought. The minute you think about the thought, you remove yourself from experiencing it. So it could be true or not. Here, nothing can be totally true. Even the words that I use to say the truth can't be true because nothing here is true. Why do I? Not because I can't tell you the truth here or lie to you. I can lie to you or I can tell you the truth here. But nothing can be true because none of it's real. So all of it's not true in regard to its, its reality. Nothing here is true because nothing, because this isn't real in any regard. If you use it to prove this is real, you used it against what it's teaching you. you used it the wrong way. If you come up to know this seems to be real because I can't escape it, you used it the wrong way. It's not wrong. You used it the what, wrong what's way. What's that? Because, okay, some people, like you say, well, this is, doesn't work. This is real. Every time, this is real. Like people can read the book and come out, this is, say this is real. Because in particular parts of the book, it is saying this is absolutely, this is your reality now. And to you, it is real. Now, people in particular states of mind, that's what they're looking to hear when they read the book. If they're looking to hear this is real, they get the verification that they want. Because they deny the, do, they deny the courses, they deny the unreality of it is true. And you can't prove the unreality is true. <laughs> but they don't think about that. Because if they thought about that, they'd go crazy without knowing the truth. So you need proof that this isn't true. The proof, the proof that this isn't true has to be 100%. If it's 100% not true, it's not true now or ever was. So this isn't happening. What do you do with that? Now, nobody here knows what to do with that. Until you had it happen, I know what to do with it. 
The only thing I know what to do is align and converge with who else knows to do and see like what do you want me to do today? Because I don't know what to do today here. Because I don't even know the, I, I I don't know what day it is because there's no such thing as a day. And the more I communicate with that, the more I the more that's my state of mind. I don't mind it. I but I, I really do have to talk about it a little more. So when these guys came around me, I was like, this is a gift. I I, I, I don't know. It's like, it's so perfect. And the thing that we talked about is what we've talked about now, because it's true. And everybody who has had the experience and knows what's true, and everybody who respects me in that way knows that there's got to be a way and we could do it together. Because we had a way and we did it together. And it was in love. And that's what they think love is. And they'd love to do it the right way. Totally. Whether they had the experience of it totally, they know whatever the fuck went on with me was okay and they'd like to do something again. And if it's total, that's cool. But if it's not total, it's going to be cool anyway. But what I'm saying is this can, this is going to bring up, it's, we're already in a change period of time. We, it, this time needs a demonstration of change. Now, in addition to that, the way you can find out what it is I'm saying is true and Jesus is saying is true is not, and then I'm going to say this, not because you're dumb, not because you're wrong, not for any other reason. Then I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Don't use your meaning when you read the Course on some particular words. Change your mind for a second. Use a different meaning. Allow your mind to be changed by the new meaning. See how that feels. I know if you do it a couple of times in the right, and not in the right way. If you do it at all, you're going to get an outcome. You're either going to think that I'm a screwball and you'd be in more chaos or think this book is totally false because it's, it's saying both things are true at the same time and telling you none of it's true at the same time. That's screwy. Because your mind can't wrap around both of it as true, even as a concept, because if it wrapped around both of it as true, the concept would be so true, you'd have to have the experience. So there's always something in your mind to deny it because this is 99.99% denial. Everything you look at here is the denial of it. And when you're still in a condition of denial, you still see it as denial. So you see the possibility as being possible, but the possibility of the course being true only helps you to deny it. Helps the denial deny it more to you. And because you think you know what denial is and it's not true, you are helping it. So something had to get right through. I don't know how to, why it was me, who could, I have no idea. All I know is I had an experience, Jesus saved me, I shot him out with salvation. He proved to me what it was before I read the book. When I read the book, I know two, one of two things. I, every word was true. I didn't remember writing the book, but this word is true. The only other person I know about is true is Jesus. Now, I'm not saying anything else isn't out there is true. I'm just saying that I know it's true. He knows it's true. If you use it truly, and when I say truly, not divinely, not like trying to do use like God uses it. But I'm saying if, if you use it truly, you use the words as we use the words. And you use the meaning of the words as we understand the meaning based on the experience we have. So there's a few words that like forgiveness, guilt is another one. If you use the Catholic idea of guilt or forgiveness, the thought system does not work. You want it to work, but it will not work. There will always be a glitch in it. That's why he calls it a miracle. The miracle proves the thought system is true and that the other thought system is, is can't be true. How do you mean but, how do you mean to use guilt differently? The meaning of guilt? You read I what I, that's what I'm trying to say. Read if I if you uh, what I would like to do, I don't know how to do this the right way. I can either do it by getting dictionaries <laughs> like uh, glossaries of uh, from like the Catholic Church as to what they used it because the first thing you know you, you teach the kids from your six years old this is how I knew the course was true so when you're a Catholic and I'm sure it's not see the Protestant Church is different the idea of the Protestant Church is we all have our own idea of what God is and if enough has the same idea we form a church and we talk about that you know that's that's why there's the Protestant Reformation that's why there's the 
second church of God because the first church of God started to talk about it in a way that the second later people didn't like. So there's all these different denominations. Like they all say Christ is true and the Bible is true, but eh, something more, eh, more or less nothing. The Catholic Church says the Bible is absolutely true and Jesus is absolutely true and this is how we know it. And the way they know it is their belief and miracles show them that. And the fact that we've been around long enough, more money, bigger churches, and I'm the Pope, we've lasted longer than everybody, so we got to be true. They don't want you to think about how they got there, how they, you know, they, they, they had armies that murdered everybody so they could be the Pope, but that's the whole other story. That's yeah. long ago. Forget the past. The past is gone. <laughs> But here's the thing. What I'm telling you is there are very, there's a few words. Go to the the way it is in the, um, you could you could use your book. You don't have to buy, I don't know how many sparklies to sell you or give you, which would be the better. I don't have that to do right now. So use the book that you're having, that you have, whatever book you have. The, either the use of terms or the clarification terms. Take it apart totally and make it just one long essay. Read it that way. And don't use that as clarifications because clarity in the book, this is why this is why it had to change. Because when he says clarification of terms, what what that means is you had a light experience that showed you experientially what that meant. After you read the book, that's what that term will mean. Because you will have an experience, clarity, and the clarity that you get won't be from reading the book. The clarity that you're going to be from the light of the Holy Spirit showing you the meaning and you knowing that that's the only meaning that it had. That's, the, that's how the terms are clarified. That's what a clarification of a term would be. Everybody has those. And you can have it, you, you don't have to have it about the terms of the book at all, but everybody has those. And you know something that's true. No, you don't have, uh, everybody doesn't have those. You don't have them. You, you just don't remember. You have them all the time. Forget it. I'm not going to talk about you right now. I'm going to talk, I'm going to just talk about this. Okay. If everybody doesn't have them, then here's the way to have them. How's that sound? If you haven't had a you if you haven't had an experience of the Holy Spirit clarifying a moment for you, then the only way you're gonna know what we're talking about is to have one of those. And well, here's the way you have them. If you haven't had it yet, continue to do this until you have it. Then everything will change again. When everything changes, do as what? things progress. What? Do what? A new understanding. You will have a moment of clarity. Yeah. Well, you said if you haven't had that happen, continue to do this. Whatever the hell you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. What about if you continue to do the same thing, you get the same results? You can only do the same thing until you have the, until you have a moment of clarity. The first moment of clarity, that's... You can you can think you're not doing the same thing, but you can only be doing the same thing over and over again. Because the only way you could have not had the a moment of clarity is by not having done what you needed to do to have it. So whatever you're going to do and don't have it, you're going to do to not have it. So continue to do whatever the hell you want to do. That's what I'm going to tell you. Now, what I'd say is, if you want to have it, at least you know, like you're like like I would say, you be. Dedicate yourself to reading the book because the book is telling you the truth and you'll start to understand what the truth is and you start to desire it more because you start to have a more and more rotten life if the book is true. Either that you can want to have a better life by putting down the book and saying, oh, there's other things that are true. Like, you know, but it's not true. Everybody's going to come to this conclusion and say the same thing. They're not going to say that I'm true. They'll never say that. What they going to say is something is true somewhere and you know what's going to start to happen? You guys are going to start to talk about it amongst yourself and you're going to take my suggestion and you're going to use the term in a different way in a non-threatening way just to experiment and plug in his understanding. That's, that's the problem. It's not my I know his understanding is true because it's my understanding as well. That's the only way I can talk about it. But it's not my understanding like I didn't write that book. I, I, I'm going to tell you Jesus wrote that book Jesus Christ and Nazareth wrote that book. I'm the last person in the world who ever you'll ever be able to believe wrote that. that I'm, I'm telling the truth about that book. And the fact that I'm the last person in the world that you'll ever believe is the most help you can ever get right now. Because you got because now you have no choice. Either I'm true or I'm false. 
figure it out for yourself. But then it's all going to be on your mind. And that's okay, too, because the only thing that's important. But what I'm saying is this. If you use those the terms, the easiest way to find out for yourself whether, because you don't want to, if I'm, if I'm lying, you don't want to do this. If you use these terms, the way I tell you, you'll find out I'm a liar or not. That's Maybe that's better. You want to know if I'm a liar or not? Use the terms the way I use, and Jesus used the terms, and you'll find out if I'm a liar or not. You'll find out who's lying and who's not lying. But you have to understand the terms. So you have to go to the way the terms are used within the text that is written. Not within people's ideas about the text, but with the way the texts are written. The only way you can do that is by self-referencing the words you don't understand to the reference book that you're using, which is why it's written in three parts. So you can have three books to hang on to, or no, there's three different books because it's self-referencing. It's always referencing back to itself as a way to have the experience that it required to be, you to be true or telling you what the experience was that Jesus found out it was true by. The effects of. That's all it's ever talking about. There's nothing else to talk about. Everything that everybody in the world is talking about that by trying to not talk about it, they're talking about it. The more they don't want to talk about it, the more they want, the more they're going to find out it's true. Because it's denial in rally, and you can only deny it up to a certain point. Here, you can only deny it up to a certain point because there's not total denial here. So in your mind, it can only get to a certain point of denial where you start to question the denial because there's nothing left to question. So what Jesus says in the beginning is, the best way to do this is to deny your own denial because your denial is as total as it could be. It's not total. It's as total as it can be here within the denial of reality, which is this isn't. The only way you can know that is to know reality. The only way you can find out, the fastest way is to deny this is real in any regard. But you can't, you really can't do it. You can use it as a way to look at a lot of stuff and eventually you look at it the right way. And you'll see that your denial of the denial is true because this doesn't exist. From then, you'll begin to know what Jesus is telling you in the book is true. Until that, until you have a full experience, of, you know, until something is clarified, you don't know what it's saying. So the book means something different to somebody who has been clarified. The only way it can be clarified is by using the terms within the system so that the system self-references itself to prove itself true. The way it proves itself true is by saying, with outside the system, nothing is true. Within the system, it's totally true because there's no, there's no such thing as outside. The only way you can do that is use the terms forgiveness, guilt. What's the other one was that he, 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 he put them in, into list like opposition to each other. I don't have the book in front of me. If there's love, there's fear. If there's... Um, like if, 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 um, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? What is it? What, exactly. Exactly. So, so with that question in the book, what Ken did is decide to make everything in reference to that question. So the way the book is written, the way the clarification of terms was set up by Ken was by using that question, if love is this, then what is fear? And he went in to explain what they, he, Jesus explained what fear is, but he didn't explain it in reference to what love is. He explained it just as it is. When Ken put, when you read, okay, the way Ken, the way the book has been was designed, was designed so because our mind is in dualistic opposition to itself. What Ken did, like a good boy, that like a good boy scholar that he is, say the question again. If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? Okay, so well, the, the inference there is. If guilt is hell, right, the opposite of guilt would be heaven, right? Yeah, or, or innocence. Or whatever you call Okay, so now what Ken went in, what Ken did was, because Jesus used those terms throughout the book, he wrote the terms as if they were juxtaposition to each other. So he said, if love is, if fear is hell, 
then love would be heaven. So if I go to what heaven is, then you get more understanding because it's in the it's in juxtaposition. It's that's the dualistic opposition. So so but Jesus is asking. So what? so so like if I go if guilt is is hell, what is its opposite? Like it right. does sound like like in the dualistic mind, like in my mind, it's still it's. It sounds like guilt still has a reality, and hell exactly. has a reality. But that's not what Jesus has asked you to do. Jesus has asked you to imagine everything that's possible because there's a dualistic opposition. Ken has asked you only to imagine what feet, what hate would be if the love is true, not what the world would be, what hate would be. If this definition of hate is true, what would the definition of love? If, if this definition of love is true, then what definition in the world of hate would be true? That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus said there is only love. There's really no definition of hate. Everything you think that isn't love is what this world is. But it's not love, so it's not real because only love exists. What Ken did was he gave you the ability for this to be really true again because he didn't have the experience that's not true. He changed the way Jesus wrote it subtly by making the, making the understanding of heaven. So wait, wait, here's, what Ken, here's what Ken did. In order for you to understand what heaven is, you have to know what hell is. So hell must be true for you to know what heaven is. What Jesus is saying is the only way you can ask the question is that when you know what heaven is, the question of what is the hell would not enter your mind because there's no such thing as that. So the best thing I can do is get you, I'll tell you what I know about it. I tell you exactly what I know, and what I know is true. And I'm going to use words. I, and he just says this in the book. I can't believe it. Thank you, God, Jesus. He says, I am going to use these words in such a way so they're virtually unmistakable. But you have to use all the words in the way he's used them to know that they're virtually unmistakable. Okay? Now... That's in a mind that's still in dualistic opposition. The best it can think is it's going to be virtually certain within itself, but it's not going to prove that the, it's going to prove that because there's going to be other things that are virtually certain as well. Not that there's only one thing that is for there's other things that can say that there's other things that can prove themselves completely true too. Because Ken thinks there's more than one truth. If truth is true and nothing else is true, you can't have something else that's true. The best you can do here is talk about that in ways that are most true and point to the way you can come to know it. When you come to know it, you'll see that everything is, all my words are true. Until that time, you haven't come to know it, you can only believe them. But you, to believe these, you're going to have to stop believing what you believe. And the truth is, you never question what you believe. So you never question the words in the book. Or, so you never question what you believe, because you believe you question them. You never question what you believe, okay? So when you say to yourself, I believe I question those, you believe you did. But you still only believe that you did. That doesn't mean that you did. That's why in the course he talks about you can listen, learn, and do, and it's in the doing. You can believe what you want. You can think you believe. You can think there are other thoughts that are true that prove your beliefs are true. But none of that makes it true. The only thing that makes it true is when you finally do what it takes for it to be true in your own mind. Because that's the only thing that's going to prove it to you. So what people do is they think that it's true because we can think a lot along the lines. We can think, we can talk about it, so that must make it true. I can say, I can see how it's completely true. But there's, there's still a question because if you, have to, if you have to see how it's completely true, then you haven't seen that it's completely true now. And you're still waiting to find out that it's true. Well, it's true now. I know it's true. Someday it'll happen. I'll believe it. No, it's true now. It's not, there's not some other day. There's no such thing as that. We can talk about it as if it's time, 
and time go on a real long fucking time, we continue to talk about it. We'll never get out of this incident. We'll never get. We'll think we went to sleep. We'll think all that's happening. None of that's going on anyway. Does it help? Those things don't help. They can't hurt, can they? It's only more time that you don't believe that you don't find out. You can't question and prove this is true all the time. Right. That's what really gets me. I don't even know what the hell going on. Because the only thing I know is none of this is real. And everybody wants to know that. Ultimately, everybody wants to know exactly what I know and what Jesus knows. Because it is what freedom is. And they're going to be so happy to be free here. They're going to not be able to stay here because they're not supposed to see it. They're not going to be this here anymore. It's going to be made up with, by free people instead of people that are in prison. The way I know it's not because there's nobody jumping out. There's still no way out. Nobody's in the, you're not here. This is saying, I'm fucking gone. That's ridiculous. It could be that easy. Not yet. That doesn't make you wrong or you're doing the wrong thing. It just means that I know, Jesus knows, that that time is not here and yet. But we also know, the way we know it, that it's already happened. So the best thing that I can do is give us to remember all this shit. Because what happens is the, the, the waves all think, stop thinking thoughts as, as like uh, the words that you think. Thoughts are like vibratory, thoughts are vibrations and they exist and they have a vibratory frequency they have that vibratory frequency with the, the totality of vibratory frequencies that exist in reality here there, here there are a limited number but they're all of that making so here you can recognize that that's true about there because everything starts to sound familiar and there's nothing new. So you go searching for something new because you notice something new. The more you search within it, the less you can find it. But the more you know that there's something new. The only thing that's new, there's nothing new, the only thing that's new is not here. And the only way you can prove that it's new is to go out there. And the only way you can prove it's new to you is by coming back here and saying there's nothing new here, but there's new something new there. How the fuck do I get back there? Some of you are going to be interested to go back there. That's instantaneous. Some of us have to keep you know, the way open because it's going to take a moment for them. But there's nothing that... There's no, the, the conversations that I have here are similar to conversations that I have with Jesus and the tech crew and all the other people. The only thing is that kind of position of certainty and they're only, they're only really trying to help me personally to help you because that the help that I can give is totally impersonal. If another person hears, they, they know it's all done because they're, what they're trying to say is, listen, I know this is going to insult you because the question everything you believe, but this is the best thing that happened to you and I, and, and I know you're going to resist it. So let's just do it in little increments. Why don't we take one word for a minute? Like our understanding or guilt. You tell me what you think it is and I'm going to see if I can figure out how to, how to help you understand from your understanding, I may use things you understand already. I may tell you your understanding is totally wrong, and I got a new way to look at it. But the only thing that we're both trying to do is come to an understanding of what one thing is. Doesn't matter what that one thing is. You tell me what one thing you want to understand, and I will stand with you until we both understand that. Because that's the only thing in the universe worth doing. It doesn't matter what it is. The worst thing in the world, it makes no difference. Because once you and I come to an understanding, based on how I understand and where I get my understanding from, we're going to be in alignment. Maybe not that thing. You may think that that's the worst thing in the world. You're going to know it's the worst thing in the world because we're going to think alike. Or you're going to know it's the best thing in the world because we're going to think alike. And I'm going to know it's the best thing in the world. I would love to find out the best thing in the world every day. Finding out the worst thing in the world that these aren't true, that's just exciting to me because that verifies everything I know is true. Otherwise, I couldn't stay here. I don't know how I do stay here. When I say, I love you, Andy, Andy, I'm not going anywhere without you, man. I'm top. That's the truth. There's nothing sure in my life to that. Because I can't. I can't go alone. There's no way. I couldn't learn. I didn't learn what I learned alone. And I can't go out. I can't do this alone. And the best thing is, let's, let me pay off all the debts, man. Let, if this guy's got to know some of the best guy. If this guy, they know who the best person is to be to help out because if they see it totally. And the most efficient way to make this happen faster is you and I hang out together. Then the only thing in the fucking universe that worth me doing is that. Everything else is, I can do anything else. And every
everything else will try to look like this. Eventually, it's got, but it's going to take time. I don't need time. I don't have time. I don't want time. Nobody wants it. You don't want it. When you start to admit these things are true, not for any reason that we, but they're just true, we can start to come to an agreement of what time means to us and why we don't want it. Not theories, why you don't want it, why I don't want it. Why in our hearts, it's keeping us from shit we want, really want. Not in theory, in fact. Because it does, and it always will. So will space. So will everything of this world. And we can get very happy learning that. We can learn, oh yeah, blah, blah. We can jump it down and love the idea that it's true. And love our thoughts about the idea that it's true. But it ain't true until we get out of here and we do it as one so we both know the one. And that we have to, that's not, take talking about it, that takes doing. There's things that have to be done in time to make this true for everyone in time that none of this is true. I need somebody to do it with. I know what the fuck I'm doing. I know why I'm doing it. I mean, told every day, this is all I got to do. Bob Dylan, I, I could be anywhere in the universe, turn the radio on, Bob Dylan comes on. How does that happen? How does the disc jockey in fucking every state I go play Bob Dylan the first thing I turn the radio on? How does that, how do they know I turn the radio on? Unless Jesus in control of space and time, they'll listen to Jesus. That does not happen. How do I know? Because every day I get up, Bob Dylan's on the radio. <laughs> At least I know I'm okay because that's true. None of this is true and I'm okay. I'm okay because none of this is true. And I'm okay, so everything is true. I wouldn't be okay if 99% of this was true. I can I can get by that way and I'll die if, you know, I can't do that. And I can't let you think you can die, because that's not the way out. I did, I died, I looked up and said, man, when I, I at this point, I, my parents are really going to fucking hate themselves and hate me more. They're going to love me more. Gonna, and, and nobody can live in that confusion. I couldn't. I couldn't get out. I couldn't die in that state of mind because it was too fucking confusing for me. I would be doing a stupid thing. What I'd be doing is, yeah, fuck them, fuck the problem, fuck my problem. I'm going to go and pretend it doesn't exist. I was conscious of that. But I said, that doesn't make any sense anymore. Especially if Jesus tells me there's no such thing as death. And I was, I did everything through right, and, and we've been to God together. And the only, I mean, there's, there's, and now people say, well, yeah, no, I really do know. So, you know, I, I'm here to verify all this is true, and there's a way for you to find it out really easily. It's for your sake, to prove, so you don't have to, so never talk to me again. Just use the words. Pretend that the system is totally self-contained. Pretend that you understand what totally self-contained means. So you think there's something that else could be that self, totally self-contained. Pretend you know what self-contained means by thinking you know what it means and you want to find out what it means because you think it really exists. And so if it exists, you must know what it means. So just pretend that you really do know and you want to find out and find out if you know what Jesus knows and use the words as he used them. And the way you can use them is by picking up the use of terms. And what he says is, this is the way I use these terms in this book. I'm using words in a way, in such a way, so as you know what it is I'm talking about, but I'm using the words in a new way and I'm trying to use them in a way so you cannot misunderstand any longer. That's what he says. I'm using words, words in a way. I'm using different terms in a way. And you use these terms too. And I know you think you know what these terms mean because you know what everything is, you know, you know, all that. But for a second, let go of that. You know, and you know how you say you don't know how to let go? This is the easiest way to learn how to let go. And the most total. For a second, admit one of the words, it made you confuse a little by a word. But don't come to me. Either if ask Jesus, 
He can answer you. He might not. That doesn't mean he doesn't exist and he doesn't love you. It just means that it, it wouldn't be helpful at this moment in time. He only knows what the, he only does what's helpful. I'm not that way. What I do, people don't think it's helpful. And it's possible that it's not helpful. Because it doesn't help them immediately, they think it's not helpful. That's a judgment. That's not truth. That's a perspective that shows you a particular answer could be true. It doesn't prove anything is true. And for me to not be true, what you have to say is something I'm saying is a lie. Or he's a liar, so I don't believe anything I say. That's okay, too. That doesn't make any... The only thing, the only way you'll really find out is if you just find out for yourself. The quickest way to find out for yourself is for it to just go to you, pick a word in your mind. Be helpful to yourself. Find out a word that you don't know what it means. Jesus uses every word you use. In every spiritual word you use or religious word you use, Jesus uses too. God, Holy Spirit, Son of God. If you're a Catholic soul, if you're a Protestant, he know if you if you think you're a soul, which actually is the best description in the world. If you just wanted to know what you are as a soul, you'd learn everything. But I don't know if you can. I don't know if I don't know if I can learn, know it right now. I don't really know. I know anybody can know, but I don't know who's who, like. I don't want to get into that. I'm just going to say this. Jesus uses terms that everybody uses in the in the realm of spiritual and religious. He uses all those terms because there's really no other way to talk about it. In any other language, there's no other way to talk about it. So it's getting interpreted and translated to thousands of language, every language in the universe. Okay, it, you could read it in any language you want, but unless you read it with ears to hear it, let let him by listening to it with the ears that can understand it. And the way you demonstrate to yourself, to the universe, and most importantly, to the Holy Spirit, is by actually doing it. So this is the way I did it. This is the way I had to do it. Okay. And it was about forgiveness, I think. I had an experience. I thought I knew everything. Nobody could tell me anything. I heard it. I knew it was true. And I heard what was false and it was false. I didn't hear me. Because I wasn't true enough. I didn't know I was true. I just said it. So Jesus right away gave me the book. Okay. I, about, I don't know, three months. I don't know, probably three or four months into the, reading the book where I thought I knew everything. is. I got to a word in the book. I said, wait a second. It was forgiveness. And I remember reading the word forgiveness. And I knew the book was true. I knew Jesus. Everything I swore was true. I would never say it was not true. And I got to this word forgiveness. And I was thinking of it in a particular way when I read the particular passage. And I sat down and I said, wait a second. If what I think forgiveness is, is what forgiveness is, then this can't possibly be true. If how I'm thinking about forgiveness is true, is right, not true, forget about true. If I'm thinking of forgiveness the right way, and the results of forgiveness, this book is not true. So one or the other is true. Either the book is not true, and it's bullshit, or I don't know what forgiveness is. Doesn't mean I didn't think I know what forgiveness is. It doesn't mean I was I didn't have the experience of what forgiveness is. It just meant that my intellect has not does not match my heart at forgiveness. That's the best way to say it. The way I think about forgiveness is not how I feel about forgiveness or feel forgiveness should be. They don't match. That's the best way. The way I'm thinking about forgiveness and the way my heart is about forgiveness don't match. So I feel bad. I don't feel good. I don't feel true. I feel like something's wrong. I feel like something's amiss. One, something's got to be true and something's got to be, I can find out what, if I only knew what true was, maybe I'm not, I would never not be true because I, I know, I, I, I know that it doesn't matter. Any feeling that comes up only comes up in relationship to the fact that you're loved. Anything, any.
any thought in your mind here that produces an effect in your body that is not love happens because you something you thought that doesn't make your thoughts good or bad it doesn't mean that what you thought was bad it doesn't mean what you thought was good all it means was the way you were thinking and the way it really is don't match yet and here's a good way to say it match let me give you because I know I know I need Jesus says I know the way I'm thinking is true and I know it produces true outcome I know I know because I know it's true here because it happened to me so he says that it's we're identical I know what he knows the way he says I know it he knows that I know the way he says I know it and we know it as one and when we went to God as one we knew God too and I got all those memories in me right here right now and not only that, I continue to get fed new memories every time, every day of the fact that what I'm talking about is true. Now, I know there's a real easy way for everybody to learn this, whether it's true or not for them. Just use the understanding, use the words as Jesus asked you to use them in the use of terms. Come to read how he is using the words, even understand every word he uses in a particular way because in his, the way he, in his system of thought words have meaning in your in your world words have meaning the wor meaning that you've been given to words may be true may be not true in my system of thought in jesus system of thought he has used words and i now use words of his because i know we use these words together it's the best way to understand what we're talking about so you just gotta understand, just if you want to find out if it's true or not true try some of these words and he, he writes about them because we saw the use of terms use these terms the way they exist in the book you don't have to believe, you don't have to make them true you just have to say within the system of thought this is what he means I don't know whether it's true or not, but, and I can't know until I know what he means. But you have to use the words as he means them, and there's several words, and I would love to help people see those words in a new way, because it's very hard to think that you don't know what they mean. And it's very hard to apply what Jesus has mean without giving up your meaning, even for a second. And when he says, you can give up for a second, if you don't like me, then take it back. He you knows that's the only thing that happens. That's the action of the mind. It's either either in the denial it's going to recoil and go back to what it thinks it knows, or it may enjoy something. It's like something, something here may help me. Maybe I should listen. If you don't decide what help is, it's all help given. If you decide to help your ego, you're going to use the words to prove they're not true. If it helps your spirit. You're going to start to feel a little different about every, about the words themselves at first. And you say, I, mean, I don't know what the words mean. Let me find out. The way you find out what the word that Jesus means as you use them is to go back to the book as it's self-referencing. Don't look. You can, I would say this. I don't know about every dictionary. You can look at, at dictionaries. Dictionary will give you the, an actual dictionary will give you the closest to Jesus' meaning as possible in one of its meanings. But you'll also find out that you didn't know what the words meant and you what you thought they mean and how they got there was not, not true. That's what you got to let go of. That's not an insult. That's what I'm saying. That's not an insult. That's just your intellect chewing itself up. That's what it's, To find out something you're thinking is not true only means that you find out something more exciting is true. Because your mind wouldn't let you have it in any other way. That's the reward for finding out to let go of what it's already thinking. But there has to be a penalty for continuing, it's not a penalty, you have that. It also has to have effects. Continuing the way it thinks must have effects. If you think unlike it is, only two things happen. You'll feel worse, or you'll feel a new way that you want to continue to feel again. And you'll look for ways to feel that way. Here are ways you can feel that way. And here's why you, and here, everything, everything will explain to you why you want to feel that way, how you have already felt that way, how to use how you're feeling to help you feel that way. He also says, but if you think it's about whether you're good or bad or God loves you or all this thing, you, you'll question, it'll lead you to more question that. 
let's say, de facto, God loves you. Let's stop. All the questions that you have, forget them. I, I know God loves you because God loves you. So operate from the understanding that I know God loves you. God does love you. And you would like to love God and be loved. No, you would like to know that too. That's a better way to look at it. You would like to know that what we know. I know God loves you. Jesus knows God loves you. I know I love you. Jesus knows he loves you. He knows Josh loves you. I can hear that. Everybody loves you, Annie. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what the, you can you can question anybody as to why. Everybody here will try to tell you why. To convince you that you're loved. Even me. What I can tell you is there's no reason why here. That doesn't make it not true. The reason why you're loved doesn't come from you. It comes from where you created. I know you're there and here. Because I know what's there and I know what's here. I see what's there, here, in you. Very easily. I don't see it. Everything else, anything else I know, you got a great, you got a great costume to help me. You're the best thing in the fuck. What you know that I know and how you look and what's happening to you, you're the best thing that I've ever met in this world to help me. So you must have been sent by Jesus because Jesus controls the face time. He sends me Bob Dylan in the morning. There's nothing I have, there's nothing I have that wasn't given to me by him. And anything that wasn't given to me by him that's not useful to me, I don't even want to know anything about. I don't want, I don't want the space, time, or expense of dealing with anything that's not useful to me in my function. I will accept everything that's given to me that's responsible and including expense of it. I don't care. Because I'm responsible for it. That's what I'm responsible for. I'm about it. That's not even, that's, I don't, that's not effort. That's by the grace of God. That's by, it's not by my agreement. It's by what I came to know is given to me to do my function. Just as I, if I do a job here, you know what you're getting. If I do a job for Jesus, I know what I'm getting. If I do a job here, I know what I'm getting. Now, I got the choice of picking early on who I want to do a job for. There was no question about who I wanted the job for. And I know who it was who was asking me to do a job. I didn't know what the job was. I had no idea what I was going to be asked to do. I only know that his offer was better than anything offered in the world. And I said yes to it. I had no idea. All I'm saying is, I'm so, I, 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 the one, I don't know how, I don't understand it at all at that point. All I know is, I know how this works, why it works. And the more people prove, try to prove me wrong, the better it is. The more people think they know what I'm saying, the better it is. The more people think I'm the craziest thing in the world, the better it is. Because as long as I'm in their minds, everything is okay. Because Jesus is in their minds. And Jesus is in your mind like I know he's in my mind. Because you could be another way. Unfortunately, I couldn't be in your mind another way than Jesus was also in your mind. That's the unfortunate part because you still think I'm unfortunate. People still think I could be unfortunate. And things like they could be unfortunate for them. So they have to ultimately say there's some danger here, something's not right. I got all that. I understand it. But I'm telling you, I don't give a shit. Don't ever talk to me. Don't talk. buy a book somewhere else. Think my book is cursed. Think I turned through something. I don't care. All I'm asking you to do is use the terms as Jesus uses it because it's a self contained system. When you use the terms as he's using them, just one, come to a point like I, I came to a point was, I, if I understand forgiveness the way I understand forgiveness, this book is totally full of shit and so is Jesus. And I could be, I can't be wrong about, I was, I knew I was right about it, it was Jesus. I knew Jesus, I had already said that. And people verified it here. They just didn't know which Jesus, or knew Jesus. I just knew I was, that was right. So when I read one or the other is true. Either I'm right or Jesus is right. My, everything in my world now said, you got to be wrong because you definitely want Jesus to be right. So what I said is, the only way I can find out is if I know forgiveness as he knows forgiveness and I use the word in my vocabulary, when I talk to people, if I said this to people, they would understand here as I understand. They do whatever they want with it. But it would be what, so I went back and I found out, bingo, in the book itself, there's a thing called clarification or use of terms. And we did it. In the use of terms, you can read what forgiveness is. Don't read forgiveness as if it's something not. Like it's not to forget it. Like he's like if love is what's its opposite. There's no opposite. 
don't go look at, don't read it as check, can't put it together. Just read what forgiveness is. Don't read what forgiveness is not to find out what forgiveness is. Don't compare it to something else. Because the way Jesus used language and the way it's written, there's no comparison. The word itself doesn't mean other than the word means within the self-containment of the book. So you can't compare it to anything else. So in fact, you can't compare it to anything in the book either. Everything is unique and total unto itself because the mind is both total and unique here. He's whole and perfect there, and that's here. Being total and perfect is impossible. So I'm not total and perfect. I just know what total and perfect is because I've been there and back. This is total perfect. I'm not total and perfect. But I'm telling you, as clearly as I can, as truly as I can, the best way to find out in the inklings of truth, when it's true or false, is use the terms as Jesus' terms, clarification terms. When I found, when I questioned forgiveness, my question came down to, now this is all the time that I'm thinking I'm awake, I'm thinking I have the right thing. I know what Jesus is, I know heaven, I mean everything. I know everything Jesus knows. All of a sudden I find the word forgiveness. I, if Jesus, if this is this way, then I don't know what it means at all. Oh, or if Jesus is used this way, then I know what it means, then Jesus is wrong. That's not okay with me. I've said everything opposite of that and agreed that's not possible already. So one or the other has to be true. I have to be right or Jesus has to be right. And in my mind, I can never be right because Jesus is always right. But I got to prove that to myself. So I went to find out, bingo, there was a use of terms. In the use of terms, there's these words. When I read what forgiveness is, let's say, this is the way I did it. When I read what forgiveness is, um, in the in the clarification of terms, because it still is the clarification of terms there. When I went to the back of the book, because there was a clarification of terms, because on the planet there was a clarification, not because I got a voice that told me. On my this, this my thinking got me to the point when I thought about it. One or the other is true. My thinking or Jesus thinking is true. Jesus thinking has always been true before, so mine could be false. So let me find out for myself. So I went to the clarification of terms, and I read, forgiveness, blah, blah, blah. Is, and I, so I said, let me just read what forgiveness is. And I read what forgiveness is. Then I realized, oh, there's other places in the book, because I've read them, where he talks about forgiveness. So let me go to the index of the text. See if there's a section as closely related to the question in my mind as I have. What is forgiveness? What are the effects of forgiveness? Is forgiveness real? Anything that talks about forgiveness, read all the, read what it what says about, read the titles of the thing that's, what, what's for, about forgiveness, all of them. And if I come to one that asks the same question, or if I read them, well, what's closest to what I want to know about forgiveness? Within the system of thought, by using it as a dictionary for itself. And what I did, and I found there's these sections. I read one section. I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Then I read another section. Wow, this is, wow, I want it. Then all of a sudden I realized there's a description of forgiveness that is what forgiveness is within the system that is true. It doesn't matter whether mine was true or not. This is really true. This is what I would want to be true. I wouldn't want mine to be true. Mine had the possibility of somebody still suffering for doing something. This had impossibility of anybody suffering for any reason, the impossibility of anything but God being loved, the impossibility of being anything. It, the a priori, let's put it this way, in the Catholic Church, your a priori reason for existence and being here is entirely absent from the Course of Miracles. So you can't understand the Course of Miracles by thinking that's how you got here. God created, in the Catholic Church, God created you, and you're down here for a purpose, and you don't know the purpose you're down here because you're not good enough to find out, and someday you'll be good enough for God to talk to you again, and you'll do anything to do that, but at the same time, you still don't know what it is, and every time you try to do it, it hurts so much that you try to deny it, so you try to do everything else but think about that. And the back of your existence is something wrong, and there's only two things, there's me, God, there's, you know, that's nothing else. What else is it going to be about? There's 
me and my parents. How come I'm so Catholic and I was never brought up Catholic? Because the closest thing, the closest thing you could possibly be to being true is Catholic. They, the Catholic, Catholic, Catholic Church is based on Jesus. It's true. The next thing that was true was Paul because he had an experience of Jesus much like mine up at the time. They made them saints. They called them something. They made their experience make Jesus true. But Jesus' experience was, you have to be, They their interpretation was, Jesus came to show us what was true. We're not like Jesus. We sinned. Sin is, actually, listen, sin is, when you actually read the definition of sin in a dictionary, sin in Latin means you without love. C was without. So he's saying you were created without love. That's not possible. If that's all there is, you were created without love. That's okay. You were created without love. That's all. If you were created without love, why would you go looking for love? See, there's something, there's always a question that can never be answered by anything here in our minds. Everybody knows that. No matter how satisfied you're, still trying to get better. So whatever it is, I don't give a shit what you think. I don't care if you think you're satisfied. There's no satisfaction here totally because there's always a nagging question. Because this can't be totally true. It can be... 99.9 percent .9 true but if it could 99 was not if it could be 99.9 percent .9 true it could also be 99 percent false which means it could be 100 percent bullshit to you so one or the other is always true so there's no need in the course to find out what something else there's only need in the course to find that what it means because it doesn't matter what it meant to you before it's not gonna matter what it meant to you after it doesn't even matter if you write about what it meant it only matters that you look into the book for the meaning that you're using as you read the book. And I guarantee, and that's that's why people, you know why people get so guilty when they ask them to get let go of their meaning? they rather give me their money than let go of their meaning. they rather have the heaven in their mind be true than to, and give me all their money and then question what I'm asking the question for a second. Because when I'm asking the question, it totally changed your existence and everything. Everything you ever thought was false. Now that's things people think is a big deal. But everything you always, all you thought was false, all at once to find out the joy of what true is all has always been, will be, and you are now. There's a difference. What you find out from is totally true. And the only reason why you look at it is I'm totally true because you're not totally true here and you know it. You can go looking for something totally true here because you think that can be. That doesn't mean you'll find it here because it's not. It can't be. It's made up to be not that. That's the theory of the course. And the only way you can find out whether you're right or wrong is not try to tell me what you believe. It's try to find out what Jesus believes or what Jesus is telling you is either true or false. And the way you do that is by using the terms as he uses them within the book because they will bring you to the same conclusions within your own mind to prove he's either true or false. And he's satisfied either way, because he knows the inevitable. Now, when you read that he knows the inevitable, it's different than me telling you, I know what's inevitably you're going to find out. Inevitably going to find out exactly what I'm telling you is true, and exactly what Jesus is telling you is true. The last thing in the world is you want me to be inevitably true, because I'm true now then. If I'm true now, it doesn't take you time to be true. It just takes you willingness to what I'm saying and Jesus saying to be true. That's okay. Don't deal with your willingness. Deal with learning the course the way it's written by doing. Forget your willingness. You want to know how you can demonstrate your willingness? Use the terms. Go read the book. Read the terms as he uses them. And read the book as he uses the terms. What that took me is three different books, which is why I was grateful for those three books at the beginning. Three different books. Because I can have one open and read and have forgiveness and the meaning of forgiveness on the other book open as well. So when I came to forgiveness, I had forgiveness there and I could plug in his meaning. That's what I did. And when I plugged in his meaning, I, I got it. He was, what I, see, I already knew it was true, but said that I got that it was true. But that was the only way I could prove that he was true. That it was true totally. Even me knowing it was true. Even my admission and saying that it was totally true and that I, everything about it. The only way I can prove it was true to myself here is by doing it this way. Now, all I'm telling you is you don't have to do it. You don't have to be like me, the slowest guy. I had to keep the book. You know how many times I had to read it different to find the proof true? Well, I'm telling you, just do it one or two times. You're smart. You guys are faster and smarter than me. Thank God. You don't have to go through what I went through. Thank God.
you know, maybe you're a different story, but you, I thank God that that's true because I need somebody. Never mind. Don't do that to me. Well, I'm doing this. Please. <laughs> I love you. No, because your help, Andy, do you, this is what I'm trying to say to you. I couldn't tell this to somebody who already thinks it's true because them thinking it's true is a block that might be able to express it. You got, you got it? The most help you can be to me and Jesus is being exactly as you are and let us use you as you are to get the truth out quicker because the quicker it is, the quicker we all are done with this and that's what you want most. And that's what I want most. Want to know why? Because I love you. You want to know, you want to know something else? This is true. In my mind, you're no different than Jesus. Jesus knows that's true. He, he, me being here with you is no different than me being here with them. That's why I want you with me all the time. I know him the same way I know you. I don't care about your falsity because the truth about you is like me hanging out with him. There's a couple of people like that. But as far as I'm concerned, you're the most consistent and you're the one that I've given. Because I, I, you know, it's perfect. I mean, there's, there's nothing imperfect even in the costume to me. That doesn't mean you're not going to find things or everything. That's just true to me. That's why I'm going to spend all my time talking about Jesus, God, and the Course of Miracles and include you in because I can't exclude you. There's no way. If I'm true, if everything I know about Jesus and what he's saying is true, then everything I know about you is true right now. And I know that I'm true and I know it is true. And in the end, what I'm going to tell you is it doesn't matter whether I'm true or not because in the end, none of this is going to be real. We're going to be back in love. You and I aren't going to remember it that way at all. This is going to be over. And I don't know. But I know there is better than here, so do you. And I know when we're there, you're right beside me because there's no place else to be. So there's no place else for you to be here, but that this is so natural. But he says that he deals with it. He deals with everything in the book. Every time I try to prove to you it's true, I know his words are in the book as true. Because it's a logical conclusion you would have to come to if you're thinking like we are about somebody like you with us. And what I'm asking other people to do is for them to prove that to themselves by using the terms as he uses them for the purpose that he uses them within the self-referencing book. You could use the three books best that way. Because in the third book, the Manual for Teachers, he talks about what forgiveness is. In the um, um, workbook, there are many lessons to help you learn what forgiveness is. Okay? So if you're reading the book, and you can, and any other term, guilt, let's use guilt. In the, um, in the teacher's manual, he talks about guilt. Not as opposed or in juxtaposition, just as guilt. Just read it as guilt. You don't want to find about guilt. You don't want to find about anything else. In the teacher's manual, he talks about guilt. In the workbook, he talk, there are lessons about guilt. If you want to find out what I'm saying is true or not, you know already. The best thing to do is pick a couple that really hit you about the truth of guilt in each one. And as you're reading the next section that you read, when that word comes up, look at the way he is using it and use it that way in, the, in the just three or four paragraphs. That's all you're going to need. Within three or four paragraphs or within one section, all those words are going to be used. So you're not going to have to go very far. And as you do that, just have it open. And just, do, you know what, that's a bit, oh my God. You really do the, to find out, this is what I'm going to tell you, you want to know how I know the course? Pick your favorite section. Open to any one of the words I just mentioned. In the, in the glass, in the uh, workbook, or in the manual for teachers. Pick your favorite section of the book. Remember the words that I'm talking about, which are the useful terms, especially forgiveness, guilt, all of what there's a couple others I mentioned. Pick those words. Open the teacher's manual to where it does this where it discusses them. Open the workbook to where it discusses. Or if you're using the workbook, open the teacher's manual, open the text and the um, teacher's manual. If you're reading the teacher's manual, open the workbook and the text. It's self-referencing. The best way to know it, because it's going to teach to you, it's internally totally true, so externally totally true, as within, so without, as so without, as above, so below. That's all you need to know, Jesus. Everything he's saying about there is true here for you now, 
Everything that's happening for you true, you can make true by doing it yourself. Everything. Including not dying. But I'm going to tell you, if that's too late, you don't have to do that. I know it's true. And you, we, can, we, we can live past that. What would you, how would you and I live, Andy, if we could die? That's what I want you to think about. It's easier for you to get that way. But here's the way you can get there. The book is totally self-referencing. When you read the text, have the manual for teachers and the workbook open the sections and discuss the same thing you're going to find out in your favorite text to those words. Rip them apart so that you have each one separate. Print them out because you can print them so you have each one. Just do that with one of your favorite section on those words and get back to me. That's the best I can say. That's the easiest way to get the entire course or throw it away. Your favorite section. You, personally. Any. Or anybody you want to tell that you trust. This is true. I'm going now. This must be short. I love you. You don't know this. Any. All I'm telling you is every, all my words are true about you too. The easiest way for you to find out is to find out everything Jesus is saying is true because they're one and the same thing to me. They're not different. If you find out Jesus is true and everything he's saying is true, you're going to find out everything you need to know to ever be with me or not be with me and I'm going to be sad. Everything we ever need to know is in you and me knowing the same thing. Then anything is possible or not possible. Nothing. Is, it doesn't matter. But that's all I know. Some, you have to do it. Because I, for me, for my, if, to get rid of me or keep me, I don't care. Whatever you want, do it with one or the other. I gotta go.